So we already know that the clamping mechanism on the brand new LGA 1700 socket isn't very good. So uh, sadly they only use a lever on the other side of the CPU socket and all of the uh, like uh, mounting pressure is on that side of the CPU socket. And what, what it does is that it actually bends the CPU by quite a bit or it bends the CPU's IHS. So uh, the center of the CPU will always be a little bit lower than these edges over here. The uh, rank one overclocker over at hardwarebot.org, so Splave from the USA actually posted some very good uh, pictures about this whole topic. So in his uh, example picture, the IHS is clearly bent. And uh, as some of you already commented on my uh, lapping video, so when I posted the uh, video about lapping, that lapping isn't very worthwhile for air or water overclocking, I'm still, I still think it isn't very worthwhile as uh, that's the most certain way to void your warranty, but it, you could technically still gain a few degrees by doing it. But anyways, so you can't get a perfect lapping finish for normal use if you lap the CPU outside the socket. So if you just grab the CPU from the socket and lap it like uh, externally, the uh, IHS will not be flat once you uh, clamp it into the socket. So the only like real way to lap the CPU properly for like normal use, you would have to do it while it has been clamped inside the socket and that requires a dead motherboard. So if you happen to have like a dead Z690 or any other LGA 1700 motherboard, you could saw the whole like socket area away from the motherboard. And then you could just put the CPU in to the socket with the clamping mechanism and lap the CPU while it's still clamped inside the socket. So it, then it doesn't matter if the clamping mechanism bends the CPU a little bit because it will be flat once you lap it. But sadly, as you can imagine, most of us just simply don't have spare motherboards laying around. So we can't really do it. So we have to try other ways to compensate for the bending. So uh, this was originally posted at Igor's or Igor's lab. So you could use some washers between the motherboard's PCB and the clamping mechanism. So those over there, I already have two over here. Those are one millimeter thick plastic washers. So on the, so on the example uh, uh, post or in the uh, news article, they used metal washers. And I think uh, Buildzoid also used metal washers in his example, but that's risky. If the metal washers have sharp edges, they could go through the solder mask on the motherboard and cause some damage like a short circuit or anything like that. That's why I would use just uh, plastic washers because they don't, they aren't conductive. So uh, I'm going to use one millimeter thick washers on each of the uh, uh, screw holes over here. And then let's try the Core i9 12900K again because we were so close at 5.5 gigahertz when the CPU when the CPU temperatures didn't exceed like 77 or 78 degrees. So let's try the CPU again with this uh, washer mod and see if it, if we gained anything at all. It would be very good if we could gain like three to five degrees. Then I could run the 5.5 gigahertz overclock more constantly. So I'm definitely interested to test this out so that I can tell you like, is this worth trying or not? I really want to try these things myself before saying anything about them. So uh, without further ado, I'll uh, install the second part of the clamping mechanism and I will then just uh, uh, put the CPU or I, put, I will put the motherboard on the test bench and let's see how this can actually run and see if we gained anything at all. So stay tuned, it will be coming out next. Okay, so now I just booted 5.4 with the 1200K. Pretty much the same settings as before. So let's see if or what kind of like uh, temperatures do we see in uh, R20 if as we, not, as we have the uh, uh, washer mode underneath the clamping mechanism. But of course, for very exact results, we would have to run uh, like at least one run in something like Pran95 for 30 minutes or even longer and just compare the uh, differences to get like an exact result difference uh, like uh, maybe two degree gain or something like that. It's very hard to call based on some Cinebench loads. Of course we can see 
like if the gain is like clear we can obviously see it very quickly in uh, something like R20 like can we pass it easier than before but uh, so far when looking at these temperatures I don't see any like proper gain to my eye they look pretty much the same but one of the main reasons is the cooler is not lapped so the cooler isn't very flat or a as flat as possible so that kind of uh, takes a lot of the possible gain away from this whole test. So let's 5.5 five. and uh, it's 1.33. So let's run. But I think it's gonna fail. Just thinking. And it crashed. So it's very on the edge. But uh, so far, to my eye, no clear gain based on this very quick test. But of course, we would have to run Pro95. I just don't know. I think there could be like a one degree gain, maybe. But uh, so far, doesn't look too uh, like... Uh, I don't see any like huge difference between the two. So uh, I dropped the V core to 1.325 from 1.33 and now it passed. Only one core was at 78, 77, 77, but uh, yeah, I need to run something like Prime 95 to uh, really see the exact difference. But uh, so far looking quite okay, I guess, but no, definitely no 5 degree improvement like what was mentioned in the article. So, uh, and okay, just to briefly uh, show you the thermal paste spread, so uh, I just uh, took off the water block from the CPU and uh, when looking at the thermal paste spread it does look a bit better than what it was by default. It's not perfect by any means but, but it does look a tiny bit better now with the washer mod. If we look at the IHS we can see that there has been some very good, there has been quite good contact directly at the center of the IHS but not so good contact at the outside edges. Now we do know that many uh, like PC uh, cooling manufacturers, they do make many of their coolers a, l a little bit concave out of the box because many uh, heat spreaders, especially from Intel, they are a little bit con uh, convex out of the box. So uh, I'm pretty certain that my water block isn't fully flat and it's a, a little bit concave like intentionally. So uh, I'm not getting the best possible performance from lapping the CPU and I think nor from this uh, washer mod because the uh, cooler, the, because the surface of my cooler isn't properly flat. So I think I could gain a little bit more if I lapped the water block. But uh, I'm still like not fully like uh, willing to do that because I would take off the nickel plating of my water block and then there would be like pure copper that can oxidize over time. Of course, it's theoretically a little bit better, but nickel, I just love nickel plating because it doesn't get damaged as easily as pure copper. But anyways, that's how uh, the thermal paste spread on the IHS looks like. And that's the thermal paste spread without any washer mode at all. So definitely worse. Okay, it's time to make the conclusion of the LGA 1700 mod video. So. Sorry for the uh, corrections I had to make throughout the video. So the uh, plastic washers I was intending to use at the start of this video, well, they weren't, ac uh, they weren't exactly one millimeter thick washers. I just took them like randomly from my table as I thought that they are maybe around one millimeter thick washers. Well, they were, but not exactly one millimeter thick washers. So I measured all of them with a caliper and all of the uh, four washers were 0.8 millimeter thick washers. So uh, that's one of the uh, things I actually realized about this modification with this particular uh, motherboard. So the Z690 Dark Kimpin does have a pretty thick PCB and there's a good reason for it. So all of the highest end motherboards, they usually have very high layer count. And the more layers the PCB of the motherboard has, the thicker the PCB will obviously be. And I think the uh, socket that's provided with this particular motherboard is still the very same socket as on the other motherboard models and the same thing for the screws and I actually couldn't use any thicker washer configuration on the socket than uh, 
0.8 millimeters over here, so on this side of the socket, but I could go up to one millimeter thick uh, option on this side of the socket, which was kind of interesting. So I made three individual tests. So I ran Prime 95 for 30 minutes with uh, 5.3 gigahertz overclock and AVX1. So I first ran the test with, uh, without any modification at all, then with 0.8 millimeter thick washers on all of the four corners, and then the third run was with the maximum configuration that I could do. So 0.8 millimeter washers over here and one millimeter thick washers over here. And I'll show you the graphs right now. So in this graph, the pink colored column is the run without any modification. The blue colored column is the 0.8 millimeter configuration on all of the four holes and the orange colored column is the maximum configuration, so 0.8 plus 1 millimeter thick washers. And if we look at the results very briefly, we can note that the best result was with 0.8 millimeter thick washers on all of the four holes or corners, whatever you want to call them. But the gain, the actual gain was, was only around one degree, so nothing at all pretty much, and it does fit the margin of error pretty perfectly. So it's very hard to say that did I actually gain anything at all in the end. The uh, funny result was the last one. So when I used or when I mixed washers, the result actually went worse and I could see it very quickly in the actual test. So when I passed 30 minutes in Pro95 in Pro with two different types of washers being used at the same time, the end result was three to four degrees worse than what I had by default, so without any modification at all. So uh, it's very hard to say, based on these results, that is this uh, whole thing even worth it. In the article made by Igor's lab, they used a much larger variety of washers. So they used washers between 0.5 millimeters up to 1.3 millimeters. So I can't definitely use so thick washer options on this particular motherboard. I would assume this the socket plus the screws are pretty much the same thing all around on all of the available LGA 1700 motherboards. But they did have the best end result with uh, uh, washers that were around one millimeter thick. So uh, if you want to try this, I would recommend that you use at least plastic washers so that they aren't conductive and use washers that you can at least use. So if you purchase one of the highest end motherboards that usually have a little bit thicker PCB, then I would suggest you use like washers that are 0.8 millimeters thick or one millimeters thick at maximum if you can use them. I think that one of the main reasons that why I didn't actually gain that much in my own testing was because the, uh, the IHS of the CPU is already lapped. So the uh, IHS, the heat spreaders on Intel CPUs, they are a little bit convex by default. So you might actually have better result if you don't lap the CPU with this whole modification. But really my issue is definitely the water block. If you looked at the uh, thermal paste spread uh, pictures that I, or the clips that I showed you very uh, previously in this video, the thermal paste spread wasn't that good. Especially in the first one, in the first clip, it can be seen that there has been a very good contact directly at the center of the IHS, but then the outside edges didn't have so good contact with the cooling solution. I'm pretty sure the issue is in the uh, water block. So the water block, they, well, we already know that many of them are actually concave intentionally from the factory. So I, I am actually planning to uh, lap the water block because it, it's not so good anymore. I have used it so much and I have, I have swapped like hardware to so much. There are a lot of scratches on the uh, water block. I could actually gain something from the whole procedure. I could actually improve the uh, surface quality of the water block by lapping it. But it's not something that I would like to do, but I, I, I might actually do it. So I would assume that if I run this again, if I even uh, run the CPU again, even without any washer modification with a lapped water block, my uh, temperatures should be visibly better like uh, definitely better than what I had now and I should be able to run 5.5 gigahertz more constantly in Cinebench R20. So don't expect 
two like uh, impressive results from this modification. I am certain that the best way to actually improve your temperatures this time around with this generation is still by deleting the CPU and swapping the stock indium solder with a high quality liquid metal option. So uh, that's definitely something that could actually help you by quite a bit. So uh, I would recommend deleting, overlapping or even over this uh, simple washer mod. Of course this is very easy to do and there's no uh, like great risk of any damage on the components but I just say that don't expect too impressive results from this simple modification and definitely don't use metal washers that could penetrate the uh, solder mask on the motherboard's PCB as it could cause you some very annoying issues. But yeah, hopefully you like to see this video from my end and hear about my uh, opinions and experiences with this modification. And if you did, then please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching one of my videos once again, and I will see you on the next one.